Hi, and welcome to back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I am your host, William Chow, and today is a special episode. Today, I am going to get into the origins of how we started Arctic Animation. All right. So, I've already done quite a few episodes to, to set the stage here, and uh, now this is the final episode where we actually <clears throat> uh, put together all the parts and and uh, give you uh, the, 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 the scene on how we actually formed and started doing uh, what we now know as Arctic Animation. So again, just a quick summary. At this time, <clears throat> you know, uh, the, w the way that we got anime is we basically had to go to our local Japanese, you know, video stores and we'd basically rent out uh, uh, tapes uh, full of uh, Japanese anime, but the problem is they weren't translated. They had no subtitles, they weren't dubbed in English. They, they were just straight in Japanese and you just had to sort of, you know, uh, use a synopsis or, you know, basically just uh, make up your own story on exactly what's going on because there just wasn't any translation uh, being done uh, for these things. So, you were pretty much on your own. Um, I had subscriptions to uh, the major three magazines, uh, Anime, Anime Media, Anime V, and um, New Type. So that basically, uh, you know, kept me up to date with all the different types of uh, anime that's coming out, the OEVs were coming out, so uh, at least I was up to date in terms of that. Um, the, you know, still there was a long lag time between getting that anime that we see in a magazine to actually, you know, get, getting a, a copy of it to see because, you know, someone in Japan had to record it, then send it all the way over, uh, you know, to Vancouver here before I could actually, you know, see it on the rental store or at the Japanese place uh, to be able to get a copy of it. So, <clears throat> uh, there was a, a bit of time like there, but I was able to keep up to date with that. So, Again, at this time, I'm also buying you know, quite a few anime uh, magazines and that kind of stuff. Again, you know, I haven't saw, uh, seen a lot of these uh, uh, animations sometimes when they when these books come out, but uh, you know the local uh, bookstores uh, were able to you know to, to, to get those in for me. Uh, you know, again, using the anime magazines, and uh, you know I can use uh, numbers and that kind of stuff to order some of those uh, art books and and uh, and. Uh, uh, reference books in uh, through my Japanese uh, bookstore. So again, so I was getting all those things in. At this time, we were also <clears throat> uh, running the Vancouver uh, Japanese Animation Club, which again we uh, we would show uh, videos that would that that uh, were coming out again without translations or anything. But we would be able to hand out uh, you know uh, synopsis sheets to give uh, people a quick idea. Uh, what what the story plot line is and uh, who some of the character names and that kind of stuff and what we, what they could expect to see, but it's not quite the same because you're missing a lot of the dialogue and maybe some of the humor and some of the comedy and some of the you know the build up of the uh, drama because you just don't understand the dialogue. Uh, you know, it's it's, it's uh, kind of like uh, getting a Cole's Notes version of a uh, of a show or a movie, and uh, you know you can only get a, a brief outline of what it's what it's about. Uh, and you can't get uh, too deep into it because, again, uh, the translation was was an issue. Um, I also had, uh, you know, quite a few uh, people and friends that uh, would drop over, um, you, know, to, you know, to my house, and you know, they, they always would, you know, same interest as I would. You know, they want to see what was new. They're interested in looking at all these uh, magazines and these sort of things and seeing what uh, you know, what's going on. So you know, they'd always come over, and and uh, you know, they'd be very interested in, in, in seeing all the different things that. Uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, that transpired. So, again, that the, 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 you know, the, that was one of the big major issues uh, that we had uh, at that time. Um, so, <clears throat> um, one of the things I was able to do is, uh, uh, with some of the addresses and the information and uh, some of the contacts that I've gained through the uh, CFO, which is the Cartoon Fantasy Organization, <clears throat> I've gotten some uh, uh, you know, these rumors that uh, there's this uh, thing called the Ranma Project, it's, which basically is, it's a group of uh, uh, fans who started subtitling Ranma one half. And again, this is a you know one of these uh, ongoing animes that was relatively new at this time, and it was a kind of a, a new concept that wow, the, the, these uh, you know fan people just like you and me um, <clears throat> are able to to you know do subtitles like uh, you know uh, you know apply some sort of kind of subtitle to these videos. And of course you know. Um, uh, at this time, the, the only type of subtitles that, that we were really accustomed to were things like um, uh, Chinese kung fu movies, 
you know, the, the good old classic uh, Bruce Lee classics and Jackie Chan movies. You know, you, you know sure, you know, they were in Chinese. Um, you know, being Chinese myself, I, you know, I understood a lot of it anyway. But, you know, uh, to my friends, they were able to now watch this, uh, the, 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 like a Jackie Chan movie or a Sammo Hung movie, and it'd be in subtitles. Uh, you know, not exactly the greatest, you know, subtitles. Sometimes they're like, you know, very fuzzy white subtitles. Um, again, sometimes the translations were like absolutely horrible. You know, like, you know, you kill my brother, I kill you, and all these, these you know, uh, lines like that. But they made the movie very enjoyable. So, again, uh, you know, we were fascinated by the fact that, you know, hey, this Ranma Project people are basically doing, you know, this kind of thing with anime. So, you know, hey, we, I, you know, we should learn more about that. Again, at this time, it'd be things like Vampire Princess Mew, Bubblegum Crisis, uh, Golf Force, uh, all these titles were, you know, very popular, um, and, you know, we wanted to get them out. Now, again, uh, at this time, we also heard rumors and, and, notion, and notions that <clears throat> uh, Anime Ego and some of these uh, commercial companies were interested in licensing these titles. But they haven't done so yet. They're still in negotiations. I remember uh, Kenichi Sonoda was supposed to show up at one of these conventions. So obviously, there's a lot, you know, talking going on. Uh, but maybe nothing's really quite finalized yet. So it was very important, very time sensitive to get these subtitles. If we're going to make them, get them out as fast as they can because they're going to have a shelf life. You know, if we spend too long trying to make them, or uh, you know, spend too much time. Um, you know, uh, in the in, in the post production type of th uh, idea, then again, the commercial company is going to is going to get them, and then you know, there's no need for the sub uh, for the fan sub anymore because obviously the commercial version is already out. So we want to try to get these out as quickly as we can, uh, you know, with reasonable quality. Um, but again, you know, you know, we sort of knew that you know, uh, you know, the, you know, even with the even with the popularity of let's say for example the uh, you know the Chinese martial arts movies you know they didn't have to be perfect for you know for people to you know get the gist of what's going on and to basically you know get the plot and get some enjoyment out of it but again time was an issue because again the, the three titles I just read out are uh, commercially released and you know and uh, you know, and they were uh, uh, you know, going to be uh, you know the, the the key releases for you know um, uh, new companies like Anime Ego and of course uh, uh, U.S. Manga at that time. So it was very important to to you know, to, to, to get in the market and, and get it get these out as fast as we could at that time. So um, we ran into you know quite a lot of issues with this. Okay, the the the, the gen lock was fine because again, as I said in, in previous episodes, each of these. Um, devices or peripherals operated on its own and did its own thing they were not com they were not uh, um, uh, shall we say uh, re uh, required to, have to run on the computer per se the word the computer was the, the worst link mega 500 to this day are you know my pet peeves of the, of the, of the computer world they're my they're, they're, you know, my experience with them uh, total pieces of crap and uh, you know uh, the Software was was inconsistent. The timing was inconsistent because it's just essentially something that just counted upwards. Um, you know, the computer kept on locking up. Simple programs, just to queue text, froze and locked up in, in like random places. Uh, which you know, again, if you're timing something uh, to, to videos, that obviously these are very very important things to do. But again, software the, 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 was very sparse. And uh, you know the computer was very you know finicky at many times or heated. In the end, uh, it, it, it met its death by being thrown off a two-story building. But that's another story. And unfortunately, at that time, we had no video for that, so that probably would be interesting. But if you're like to get an idea of what that looks like, uh, watch the beginning of SCTV, and that will give you an idea of what it probably looked like. Anyway, so. Our first couple of things that we did subtitle again were things like Mew, uh, you know, uh, you know, Bubblegum Crisis. Um, you know, we even did uh, started uh, one of my, uh, uh, you know, a TV series that I really got interested into, which was Orange Road. And so we again we're using this, uh, you know, this flaky sort of Amiga thing. And then we started uh, using that. Uh, we subtitled quite a, you know, a bit of uh, shows at that time, and, you know, and we created something called the Orange Road Project, which allowed us to. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, subtitle a good chunk of uh, Orange Road. Okay, as I slowly learned more and got more information from the CFO, um, 
uh, the, uh, Bruce Carlson out of the Phoenix group uh, really was, uh, was, was very helpful uh, in this. Uh, he later pointed me to va uh, various other improvements to the uh, uh, fan subbing um, uh, using Genlock's uh, uh, trade here. Uh, he found and, uh, and, and helped me uh, locate uh, some computer software that was a lot more accurate with in terms of the, the, the timing, less crashing and that kind of stuff, but it was on the Macintosh. No big deal, I had one anyway. So, and the primary uh, 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 Genlock device that, uh, that people were using at this time was something from True Vision called the Video VGA uh, or the New Vista cards. No, they were the you know, studio standards at this time. Um, so again, that gave me higher quality, more reliability. But of course, I've already started subtitling a lot of anime already. Orange Road, we probably uh, at this time had already started a little bit of Maze on Ikaku uh, at this time. And uh, so we went backwards and, uh, you know, and, and redid a bunch of the episodes. Again, we had to retime them all be, again because the, 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 you know, the timing on the Amiga wasn't minutes of a, and seconds or a thousand, uh, hundreds of a, of, a, of, a, of a second or anything like that, like that. It was just counting up from one uh, kind of a counter. Uh, on the Mac, it was a little, a little more, more accurate. It was, it was down to about tenths of a second. And that allowed us to, to do, to do uh, uh, you know, editing, uh, editing of that sort of nature and some sort of uh, reliable consistency in terms of uh, what you do on one uh, run would be consistent and could be repeated in a second run afterwards. Um, again, uh, I'll get into the, 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 you know, how we did and what the difference is between linear editing and non-linear editing uh, or fan subbing um, in a uh, further episode. So again, you want to hit subscribe and uh, you know hit like below, and then that way you get notified when I get those uh, episodes out. Because that's uh, again a little more technical about how the difference of of, of, uh, of what the uh, fan something that we did back then against uh, what you will do now again. Um, so. <clears throat> As you may notice that also the, the, the titles that we picked uh, to do uh, fan subbing, um, you know, I mean, there's many different animes that came out at that time. You know, why did we you know, decide to pick, you know, Vampire Princess Mew, uh, Golf Wars, um, you know, uh, uh, Bubble and Crisis. Well, obviously Bubble and Crisis is you know, and Golf Wars, you know, Kenichi Sonoda, uh, which happens to be one of Daisuke's favorite uh, artists. Now again, you know, as I mentioned in a, in a previous episode, you know, you know, Daisuke doesn't always pick all the most popular characters. Uh, you know, for example, uh, his favorite uh, golf horse character was actually Caddy. But, you know, <clears throat> it's one of those type of things that he did. Uh, but again, you know, he didn't really like Orange Road at the time. Maison Akaku was his favorite that that and stuff. So with a little bit of uh, give and take, uh, I got more translation of Orange Road and uh, I was able to, you know, to, to do more fan something of that. Okay. The other very instrumental part <clears throat> that happened uh, to help the beginning of uh, Arctic Animation was uh, a person named Wayne Rempel. Uh, he was our first treasurer for the Vancouver Japanese Anim uh, Animation Club. And one of the things that he did, he did all the legwork and all the applications and that stuff needed to make the Vancouver Japanese An Animation Club a non-profit organization and got all the, uh, the, the things ready to do that at the bank. And the bank that we actually used was the CNIBC Bank at uh, Broadway and Maine. Now, of course, if you go there now, it's a Tim Hortons. It kind of makes you wonder what they store in the vault, but that's another story. Anyway, so the, he really helped uh, to get things started by, by setting up the account for that. Uh, it was only just an extra step after that to set up the accounts to do uh, Orange Road Project and Arctic Animation. So, and again, this allows, uh, that basically set up the ability for us to take uh, you know, things like money orders and, and, and payments and, and things like that for uh, all, the, uh, all, all, the, all the mail orders and all the requests for Orange Road and all the other various things that, that, that Arctic Animation you know, produced at that time. So that was a very, a, another key thing that happened to help push that along, okay? So <clears throat> now that we have these, uh, you know, fan subs coming out and, and different things, uh, you know, the, for example, uh, being made 
people can find information on our uh, BBS uh, about uh, you know what titles are coming out. And again, uh, you know, Orange Road was the big main thing that a lot of people got into. Again, I'll get into more fan stories and that kind of stuff about uh, how uh, how Orange Road or Maze on Kaku has changed. Um, how they viewed anime and, and how they got into anime or made you know more people interested in anime because of shows like Orange Road and uh, Maze on Kaku. Um, again, I've already did one episode on fan mail, but I'll do more because uh, it seems to be a pretty popular topic. So again, hit subscribe and hit like, and then that way you'll get more, more notifications when, when that happens. If you want to get a, uh, leave me a, an email, send me some comments, you know, uh, by all means, uh, the link is directly below. Um, Another way that you can uh, participate uh, with this uh, video cap is again, I'm, uh, I, I, you know, I wear uh, a lot of ball caps, and today, uh, thanks to my friend uh, Joe, um, I got sent a, uh, a Toronto Blue Jays cap. Okay, and uh, so my player that I'm going to say give a shout out to is Mr. Edwin Encarnacion. Encarnacion! Right. Uh, and, uh, yeah, being the DH uh, hitter for the, uh, for the ball club, and he's, uh, I'm sure, drilled quite a few of those uh, home runs into the very far uh, back uh, seats over there. So I'm gonna recommend a drill anime, okay? What would you think is a good deal? Right? I'm gonna suggest it. D4 Princess, okay? Or Drill Princess. Okay. Short OVA set, uh, three episodes, a very competitive, uh, you know, battle combat with uh, girls in armored suits kind of thing, uh, uh, kind of anime. Okay, so that's my recommendation to you. Very, it's very short, very, uh, it's, uh, it's quite cute. Uh, D4 Princess, for you, Edwin and Canarsion. All right. Okay. So until next time, see you again.